Hi, and thank you for joining us for our Summer Reading 2022 Oceans of Possibility craft series, Beaded Animal Keychains. This year we are featuring three sea creatures. We're going to have a shark, a turtle, and a fish. Each one of these kits will be available. Um, supplies are limited, but while supplies last, you'll get a kit that's at Center Branch that you can go ahead and grab. Uh, it'll each come with instructions. And each one's gonna have instructions for the individual craft. So you'll have the fish instructions on this one. Uh, and then it'll also come with a small bag of supplies. Each bag will have some cord and a variety of colored beads that you can use. And each of the instructions will tell you if there's a particular pattern you need to put the beads in. So these are of course gonna be available starting on Tuesday, June 21st. And <coughs> and as, like I said, supplies are limited. Just as an aside, um, I'll probably mention this in every one of the tutorial videos. However, the only thing I will say you definitely need for this craft from home is going to be a plastic bowl because pouring these beads in a plastic bowl is going to save you from having to chase the beads around your house. So let's get started. So welcome back to the shark and we're going to be making Sherman the shark now. In your kit, you should have gotten a variety of uh, sea-colored beads, ocean-themed beads. We've got some seafoam green, we've got some clear blue, solid blue, white, pearlescent white, and gray. So some sharks are gray, some sharks are gray and white, some sharks are blue and white, so uh, that's up to you. You can make them whatever pattern you like. I I dig patterns. I like patterns a lot. So I tend to do patterns. Of course, you can do whatever uh, you'd like on yours. So let's get started. And to start, just like every other animal, we need to see how much cordage we need. And the pattern says Sherman the Shark needs. Let's see if I can get up there. Sherman the Shark. And where is he? There he is needs three yards of cord and he's not focusing but three yards of cord is what we need so we'll get out our trusty yardstick um, if you have a ruler at home that is nine feet because it's whatever yards times three that's how that works so I'm just gonna get some um, extra cord we had uh, because I don't want to use the black cord that's in the kit because I want someone else to be able to use that so we have one, and I just run along there, two, three. Now most of these patterns I found tend to give you a little bit more cordage than you actually need. So if you are running low, and say you only have two and a half yards, or like eight feet, you're usually going to be fine. Um, so the next thing we do, after we measure out our three yards of cord, is make a whole lot of noise. Sorry about that. So we're going to find in the kit you'll also have gotten where'd it go? Did I put it in the bowl? Oh, there it is. I knew it was in there somewhere. A little keychain. Like that. All right. So put that down. Gather your cord and fold it in half. You want to make the ends meet halfway. So you want to take your two ends, line them up nicely like that, and then pull it all the way through until you have a loop at the end. This should be just an open loop like so. You're going to try to pick up the thing off the table. Run it through your thing, your keychain, and now you're stuck with a loop on one side and then your rest of it here. I like to put my fingers through here, open it up, pinch the cord and draw it through, being careful not to pull on one side or the other. If you make it uneven, um, it could throw off your measuring. However, again, like I said, there's usually enough extra that it's fine. So to keep some tension, you have a couple options. You can either tie a string or a hair tie or something around a doorknob, hang it from a doorknob. I'm kind of fresh out of doorknobs here at the library, so I am actually taping a piece of the cord to the table. <coughs> to the table. <coughs> I'm actually taping a piece of cord to the table 
that um, is going to provide you with some tension because you'll need some place to anchor your keychain. This just happens to work best for me in my situation with the filming. And I'm actually gonna pull it up a little higher, so there we go. Because the shark's a little on the longer side. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I like to do is figure out what kind of color scheme I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna do blues and pearls, I think. We have a pearlescent white here that's really pretty. And most of your kits should have some of these, if not a lot of them, at least some. Um, I think they're really pretty for ocean life because they shiny. I'm all about the sparkles and the shiny. The reptile kit has some sparkly green and I love those. Those are my favorite. Oh, and it also says you're going to need 107 beads all together. I tend not to count it out ahead of time um, because when I'm done, I'm done. So right now I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to pull out my white beads and try to put them off to the side so that you're not going to end up with the cord flopping around. Sometimes uh, you tend to roll them off. Uh, I also like to do this on the floor if possible because your beads don't fall as far and if they don't fall as far they can't bounce as far and you don't have to chase them as far. So it is up to you. You can do it at a table just like I'm doing if you like. All right, let's get some blue going. We'll need some blue and I have two different in this one I in this particular kit um, because each one's slightly different, just depending on uh, supplies. Um, we have some clear blue and we have some more solid color blue. So it'll be interesting texture um, for the top of them. Some of your kits are only going to have clear, some of your kits are going to have um, more solid. It's just really up to what you have and of a chance. Um, like I said, I'm just doing this to start because it makes it easier later on. You don't have to do this, you can totally Again, the bowl. Put it in a bowl because that'll save you so much heartache and crawling around the floor chasing your beads. While I am doing um, the most boring part of like just stringing it across, um, I'm going to talk about some fun facts about sharks that you may or may not have known. So let's get started. To start, we're going to take one side, just one string, and we're going to string up two beads because that's what the pattern says to do, is to start with two beads. And if you follow along with your pattern at home, you will see that that is uh, the first row. You're gonna string it up like that. And then we're going to take the other one, the other string that's not attached to bees, and take the end. And these first few rows get a little difficult because the string is so gosh darn long. So you're gonna run it through the opposite direction. Oh, I just ran it through, literally just ran it through the knot at the top. Eh, don't do that. Ah, what are the chances? I couldn't do that if I tried. There we go. So once you've got it going through, you're basically going like this through the beads with the string. Snug it tight. Try to make sure the string is nice and flat when you're, um, I kind of like just wiggle it around in the beads until it flattens out because you want to make sure it's nice and flat and then make sure it kind of sits in the middle so it sits straight down. That's why it's nice to have tension because you can make sure you pull it straight down. You don't do quite as much work. Okay, so we started with that. That's row one done. The next row is three beads, and I'm just gonna do his nose completely white. And then kinda, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll go into like a triangle shape and kinda fan out into blue on the sides. That'll be fun. So next row is three. This one has a spot for eyes, but everyone knows the shark's eyes are on the side of their head unless they're a hammerhead and they're on, they're on those little stalks. So I'm just going to do straight across and maybe put the eyes a little farther out. I think I'll do this on the outside instead of where they say the pattern. Again, up to you, but in an effort to be scientifically accurate, I want to make them in a different spot because that's just not where they are in real life. Okay. So some fun facts about sharks while I string up some beads. Did you know? The sharks do not have any bones. Their bodies are made out of cartilage. And cartilage is kind of like that uh, rubbery, bendy bone that we have in our ear or in our nose. So it's not quite bone, it's cartilage. It's made of a different material and it's harder to break. So sharks are pretty sturdy. They don't tend to break bones. Most sharks have really good eyesight. 
but they also use electroreceptor cells on the sides of their faces. Like right, they run basically right along the side, like say this is your shark. Ooh, you swim in the ocean, right? Right along here on these sidelines, there's little electroreceptor cells. And what that does is it detects the random electric impulses that every most creatures in the ocean produce. So if I'm a fish swimming along, without realizing it, my muscles are producing an electrical impulse. And the shark who is looking to eat me is listening for those with their electroreceptor cells that everyone has. And a shark skin, if you ever get a chance to pet a shark, which to me sounds terrifying, but I'm sure it is pretty darn cool. Um, their skin feels a lot like sandpaper, actually, because they have these minuscule, like microscopic almost hooks um, on their, their skin. And that's kind of how they uh, protect themselves and how they keep their skin, which is kind of cool. Sharks, as well as the other animals in this kit, are all in the, have been around for a very, very long time club. Sharks uh, have been around for so long that they were swimming around when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. In fact, the oldest fossil is millions of years old. When scientists are tracking and studying and doing medical stuff, to test and see how sharks function, because again, they are super old and really fascinating. Um, one thing they can do to incapacitate or make the shark uh, not fight back without hurting the shark is flip them upside down. When you flip a shark upside down, they go into a trance-like state, which means they kind of like, they're not really napping, they kind of know what's going on, but they also can't move. Um, so that's kind of a really cool thing that they figured out about sharks. Six, and we'll do it this way. We'll do four white and two blue. We'll start the uh, pattern here. Oh. Again, make it up as you go, man. There is no right way. <laughs> there is no wrong way to do this. So you actually can tell how old a shark is by counting the rings in their vertebra or their backbones. So backbones of sharks, um, you can count them just like you count a tree ring, the rings of a tree trunk, to see how old a tree is. You can see how old a shark is by counting the rings on their vertebra, which is the bones that are running up and down their back. I thought that was kind of cool too. So there's a shark called a blue shark. I think that's kind of what I'm going for today, who is one of the few sharks that are actually blue colored, like super vibrant blue. And they do this, of course, as a camouflage technique. Um, sharks are predators. They do have some predators that, you know, try to beat them, eat them in the, in the wild. But for the most part, sharks are what they call apex predators, which means uh, nothing else really hunts them. They kind of are the ones doing the hunting. So um, they are blue on top because if a fish is swimming above them uh, and they look down, all they see is blue. At the blue at the bottom of the ocean, the bed of the, uh, the wherever they are. A lot of times they're in shallower water and they look, it looks blue. So, uh, and they're white on the bottom because when they're looking up, the sunlight comes in as white. So it's a good camouflage technique so they can sneak up on their food. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. So I always have to count. <laughs> it's really important. Um, I'm gonna make sure you count the beads that you're supposed to be using, how many in each row before you start because otherwise you have to pull it out and start again. So, continuing with my pattern, I'm doing two white beads on the outside. I should have probably done gray instead of white, but you know, here we are. It's gonna be a white shark. <laughs> and there are some white sharks out there. They're usually like a gray or tan. So each shark, speaking of patterns, has spots or a pattern, and they are as unique as a fingerprint. So you can, scientists, when they run across, they, they usually tag the sharks with electro receivers, um, so like the beacon, so they can find them and track them electronically. But if they came across one in the wild, um, they could actually, just like with whales and their tails, 
um, I hate a rhyme, um, they can actually see uh, which shark it is by the pattern of their spots or their stripes or whatever they have, usually their spots. Hmm. All right, we are moving on to the fins. So this next row is going to actually have the fin included. Um, figure out which color you want the fin. If you want it to be the same color, that's absolutely fine. Um, it does make a difference, but if you're trying to make into the pattern and make it a different color, you'll need to pay attention. So if you look at the pattern, you can get it to focus. Okay, here's your shark. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the row, and then you have one that's looped in. So what we need to do is actually put that on the cord in the right spot. So what we'll do is we've decided we're going to do one row, one of the red white on the outside, and then we'll do, we're going to do three blue. Let me double check to make sure that's what I want to do. Actually, maybe the better way to do this. There may be a better way. Okay. So let's string on our regular beads. Okay. Let's see how this works. So then, hold off on your, this is my single fin bead for this one. So string it through until it shows you where to pull it out, which is this middle bead. Right? So run it through here. And then let's take this one fin bead, line that up, and then we're going to go back through this here, and then finish off the row. So now we've got our fin. Ah, I just caught that. In there. Let's get this flattened out. And then we're going to run it through the rest of the way so we can finish off this row. And then we'll do some finagling to get it so it lies flat and flush, and that's okay. Here we go. So that is one fin. It sits right there. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, that does run separate. That's helpful. All right, so second verse. The next row is seven beads again. So we'll do the same pattern. Let's do the same pattern, just makes it easier. White, five blue, Run to the middle again for the other one. So it comes out of the same bead. Fourth bead in. So basically take a break in the middle. It tends to work, seems to work very well. So let's go with that. Fourth bead. There's that one. Gotta make sure your fin bead from before doesn't get stuck in the wrong spot. <laughs> Dude, that'll happen too. All right, so now we have our next row is two beads, and we'll do two gray beads. And that one, you just, so to make that, you just string on two, pull them all the way down, then you're going to Go through this way. And then the rest of the way through. Find the rest of your beads. And then at the end, we'll slide everything down so it's nice and snug. Otherwise, you have a really floppy shark. And that would be bad. Oh, I missed a bead. Why did I do that?
Oh, of course. Make sure your fins sit up. <laughs> so your shark's not drooping a little bit. There we go. All right, so that's two fins. And the next one is exactly the same. It is the same pattern, the same core, uh, uh, configuration. I'll do that one more time. A little less talking so you can just watch this time. Basically, the rest of this is mostly just um, running the beads through uh, in a straight pattern until we get to the feet. Once we get to the feet, uh, I'll come back and we will work on that together. There we go. Again, sometimes it just takes a little bit of fiddling. There we go. Now we have all of our fins, our shark fins up here lined up. The rest of the shark is going to be um, straight beads until we get the tail, so let's go ahead and skip the boring until we get to the tail. start on the fins now. We have gotten our body, our fin, our, our top fins, and we've got our little fishy body here, almost to the tail. So here's how the tail is going to go. It's a bit tricky, but I'm sure we can do it. First row is going to be five in a row, because we went to four, and now we're doing five, so we'll do some more blue in here. Of course, let me know in the comments if you can think of any other shark trivia that I might not have gotten to, because I love to learn about sharks and animals and all types of creatures and critters, and I would love to know if you can teach me something, because I like that. My favorite thing is when that happens. Okay, so, you've got five <clears throat> to start. So in each tail, if you count your the beads that are in the tail, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight beads. So, what we're gonna start with is we're gonna string up, figure out what the type color you want your tail to be. I kinda want mine to be blue, so I'm gonna put eight blue beads on one of the strings. Just one, because we're gonna do the tried and true, safe and first, same as the first type dealio. So, whatever we do on one side, we gotta do on the other. Gotta keep it symmetrical. Symmetrical means it's the same on both sides, in case you didn't know. It's one of those, you know, 40 point words in Scrabble, because there's a Y in it. Okay, so how we start is <clears throat> the bottom one is by itself. So we're gonna come up and find the next two. And we're gonna come through, kind of loop through like we did with the fins. What we're doing is we're folding the beads. There's another row of two, so we find the next two. And you're just gonna basically fold them over so that you can run the cord through the opposite direction. And what this does, we're gonna find three. Yep. Find three, come on. Be a little tricky, but we'll get there. Three, 
three. So when you look at it, you should have a nice little triangle going on here. And you can, of course, fiddle around with them, shift them around so they fit better. It's all good. So that one's kind of, there we go. Now, went the wrong direction to the three. <laughs> there we go. That's what I did wrong. Okay. Sometimes you, and I, I've done this before, just sometimes you get a little caught up in what you're doing. Okay. There we go. That's better. So now we have it. So we put it up through this middle bead. of the five. And ah, what are you doing here? That's not right. It's strung the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay, that's what you do. So that is one fin. And we'll do that again with a little less uh, flesh confusion because this is the first one I did in my practice round. So it's been a minute since I've done it. So it's five, six, seven, eight. It looks a little bit wonky right now, but it'll flatten out as soon as we get it done. It's just a matter of getting everything in the right place. And all the beads on there. Okay. So, let me go with the one. Back through. Flip it. Find two again. that one. And then go through the three. And then flip them just like before. And put it through the second bead, or the third bead in the middle. Snug those both down. All right, and there's your shark. See, this tail fins just come together quite quickly. It didn't take very long. So, to finish off, overhand knot down at the bottom because you'll see they're really close together. Super easy. And then another overhand knot. And then, if you like, you can put a dab of tacky glue right there at the bottom to make sure that that knot stays put. Give it about an inch or so, inch and a half maybe, of string at the bottom so that there's no, and see there's a little left over, not a whole lot, but a little bit left over, of course. So it's nice to have a little more than you need, but not enough. And then we can re release him from his prison. Come on. Oh, he doesn't want to go. Oh, I don't want to stay. I want to stay. So there we go. We've got our, our shark. If we turn to the side, you can see his fins, and you can see his little tail, and he's so cute. Um, I hope you have fun making your beady keychain, pal. Whether you made Glow the Fish with his little eyeball, or you made Shell the Turtle, the sea turtle, or if you made Sherman the Shark with his awful funky dorsal fin. This one was a really fun one but it is a little bit tricky, so hopefully you did fine and that video was very instructive and helpful for you. I do hope you have fun and you did a great job. 
So before we go, I want to go over the summer reading prizes that you can earn by participating in our 2022 summer reading program. The kids have uh, some prizes. They have a stuffed fish, a stuffed sea turtle, a stuffed octopus, an orca whale, and a penguin. And all of these come with a corresponding book. Our prizes for teen include Book of the Month Club for six months, an Owl Crate for three months, a Tokyo Treat Crate for three months, a Maker Crate, a Eureka Crate for three months each, or a Global Play Pass for a year. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the one where you can go to various activities around town for free for a year. So that can be a really fun one as well. For adults, it's even better. You can get an Acetique Annual Pass, a Book of the Month Club for six months, a 12-month family membership to the National Aquarium in Baltimore, or, or a 12-month friends membership for the Ward Museum, it's a local museum, or you can also get the prize of a Chromebook or a laptop. All of the adults, they simply have to log 10 books, so you read 10 books over the summer, uh, audiobooks, ebooks, physical books, they're all fine, they all count. Um, the teens and the children have activity-based badges that you can do. It does also involve, if you wanted to read a book, you can also read a book to log one of them, but most of them are activities, just so you know. Um, when you get your summer reading bag, when you register on the library, you'll get a book very much like this, and each one's going to have a game board. You can use this game board to keep track of what you're doing and then bring it into your local library and we'll uh, log it for you or you can log it yourself at Beanstack and there will be a link at the bottom for the Beanstack um, of this video. Uh, 6 to 11 and then teens as well and bef but uh, yeah and they have like little coloring pages and they have jokes like some jokes in here. Some are really cute. I'll read one as a spoiler. How do you make an octopus laugh? With ten tickles. Anyway, they're all silly like that, and we love that. Uh, and also, any activities that we have going on are also going to be in the back. Um, if you'd like to check out our podcast, we also released a podcast uh, talking about all the activities that are going on in summer reading as well, if you wanted an overview of that. Um, all this is also available online on our events calendar, and we do hope to see you there. Thanks.